With regards to the question of whether people living with MS are at an increased risk of acquiring COVID-19, or if they get COVID-19, whether um, they are at an increased risk of developing COVID-related complications, the bottom line answer is that we don't yet know. However, um, the good news is that you know, we are now you know, entering into uh, the third month of uh, this pandemic, and um, there has been quite a bit of global communication um, you know, amongst uh, MS specialists around the world where different countries are setting up uh, COVID MS registries. Um, people have blogs and websites where, where they are sharing um, information from various clinics. And so um, it's actually quite reassuring now that we're you know, nearing the three month mark um, that um, generally around the world, um, whether it's in uh, Europe or North America, it does not seem that there seems to be a uh, significantly increased risk of COVID in people living with MS. And as you know, the majority of people living with MS um, are typically at one point in their disease course on disease modifying treatment. Um, what's even more reassuring is that um, people living with MS who get COVID, so have a confirm, confirmed COVID infection, do not seem to be at an, a significantly higher risk of developing COVID-related complications. And so um, how most places are monitoring this is um, assessing whether patients need to be hospitalized, and particularly if they are hospitalized, if they need to go into the intensive care unit where they require some sort of ventilatory support. Um, so it's been reassuring because, you know, many countries around the world have established registries, are sharing information, and three months in, there does not seem to be any sort of signal of an increased risk of COVID um, or COVID-related complications. Um, so it's not perfect data, obviously, and we do need to do more rigorous studies trying to understand this better. Um, but as an MS specialist, this is um, important information, and I have been telling patients that, you um, we're still not sure, um, but at the current time, no um, you know, alarming signal has emerged, and um, this is actually quite reassuring. So in terms of um, whether there are uh, specific risk factors um, for a patient with MS acquiring COVID, again, um, it's not quite clear, but um, generally what we're doing in clinical practice is applying um, what we know from, um, you know, in general, about um, patients who uh, are at risk of acquiring COVID or COVID-related complications. So, um, you know, similar to the general population where we know that um, older age is a significant risk factor as well as um, additional comorbidities um, are a significant risk factor, we're kind of applying the same principles in people living with MS. So older MS patients, typically we think, you know, everybody has a different um, cutoff of what they define as older, but um, generally, anyone above the age of 60 or 65, we get a little more worried about. Um, and in people who have other comorbidities, um, whether it's high blood pressure, cardiac comorbidities, other respiratory comorbidities, we just get a little bit more worried. Um, in addition, um, uh, we get worried, uh, you know, much like the general population, if an MS patient, for instance, has had close contact with uh, um, someone who had a confirmed COVID infection. Um, the other point is that, and we'll probably discuss this in a bit more detail later, but um, in individuals on certain MS disease modifying treatments that we know have more of a powerful immunosuppressant effect, um, we get a little bit more concerned. Um, having said that, you know, uh, based on the data that are being reported thus far, um, it doesn't really seem that, um, you know, some of these higher efficacy medications that we think have a more powerful suppressant effect on the immune system necessarily, at least as of this point, um, dramatically increase an in individual's risk of COVID or COVID-related complications um, when they have MS.